Lydia Yang got eaten by a dingo. Look, it's a separate video, so don't complain about me talking about politics. The Wandering Earth is a big, loud movie that puts China squarely on the sci-fi blockbuster map. And I'm not talking about the Chinese film industry, I'm talking about China, the country. One thing I didn't mention in my review is that when I watched this movie, I saw it on the China equivalent of IMAX, called China Film Giant Screen. No, that's... That's really what they call it, see? They can't call it IMAX for, you know, legal reasons. The biggest of which being that a court found that they had stolen IMAX technology, but it was a Western court, so obviously they were, you know, unfair. I think that they should just rebrand it IMARX and call it Cinema with Socialist Characteristics and, you know, be done with it. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Or not. <laughs> now, there's been a lot of talk inside and outside China about nationalism in the wandering earth. And I'll say right up front that I didn't really see that much of it, and what I did see was either understandable or excusable. There is this one thing that you never hear it's a country, a country that makes a lot of movies, including science fiction movies. It's a country that's been to the moon. The flag of this country is visible in, you know, one or two shots, but it's never mentioned by name. Now, there's a similar thing going on with an organization that might seem familiar somehow. The United Earth Government, whose logo looks suspiciously like a kind of Shanzai UN flag, is voiced, on interstellar comms, by a representative from France. Now, is this nationalism? Maybe? Does the movie do this for the global audience or the domestic one? You know, one person I talked to said that it's very possible the movie doesn't mention the United States so that it could get clearance to play domestically. There is apparently no way that Saperft would want Wu Jing, and by extension China, to be subordinate to the U.S. or the U.N. There's, of course, no way to know, but it makes as much sense as any other explanation. You know, I was almost kind of hoping that there would be a title card at the end of The Wandering Earth like there was in Wolf Warrior 2 and Operation Red Sea. Any Chinese citizen who's in trouble anywhere in the galaxy can rely on the Chinese government for assistance. Call this number. But there wasn't anything that ham-handed, and I was grateful. But if it was there, I could honestly think that it was Wu Jing just kind of having some fun. So I even wouldn't have minded. It would have made me laugh. Recently online, there's been a photo circulating where you can see a ticket for The Wandering Earth and printed on it, it says, only the Communist Party can save the Earth. And people kind of got a little frothy about it. But it turns out that it's just a ticket printing app that allows you to print, quote, anything you want on a ticket. Now, I'm not sure just how much of anything is allowed because I can think of things I might want to test, but that really doesn't matter. What matters is there's nothing as didactic as that custom movie ticket in The Wandering Earth. Is there nationalism? Well, yeah, but there's no more or less than you get in movies like Armageddon. Wu Jing at one point refers to himself as a Chinese astronaut. Well, he is, and he never really talks about China in any kind of political terms. Yes, he mentions Chinese culture, he mentions the Chinese New Year holiday, but there's no flag waving here at all. I mean, he has a flag on his uniform. All the other astronauts have their flags on their uniforms, too. And even if there was flag waving, it's exactly what Hollywood's been doing for decades, even in space movies. Maybe Americans are seeing nationalism in the wandering Earth because we've been doing it for so long that we forget what it looks like from the seat. I mean, let's face it, when people from a place make a movie about, you know, trying to save the Earth, you can't really separate the movie from the place that made it, and therefore the people from that place. If a Chinese astronaut is trying to save the planet, then implicitly that says something about China. You don't think American movies implicitly say things about America? Of course they do. I think in that sense that it's kind of good for Americans to get othered. It really can help us to learn more about ourselves as well as other people. So to sum up, are there politics and a little bit of nationalism in the wandering earth? Well, of course there are, but there's no jingoism or flag waving or other nonsense. And whatever little bits of nationalism and politics there are, we can certainly find it scattered all over Hollywood too. So it's really nothing new or groundbreaking or God forbid, insulting. Okay, the one thing that did strike me as a little a little weird was the, the suicidal Japanese people who talk about how they're going to miss miso soup right before they off themselves. But no movie's perfect, right? Lydia Yang got eaten by a dildo.